Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. Welcome to another 360 tutorial. In this video, I want to look at how I set up a new site for site building using Elementor and the Page Builder framework. Recently, someone on Facebook asked how to get started with Elementor and the Page Builder framework theme. They weren't sure what settings to configure in the theme and what settings to configure in Elementor. This is a common question and it's important to get it right in order to be efficient and avoid conflicts. In addition to Elementor and the Page Builder framework, when I start a new site I also use the Central Color Palette plugin for managing color options globally. This tutorial outlines the steps I take when starting a site. There are probably dozens of different ways to do this, but this is the process that I follow. I have a test site here. This is the 2020 theme and I've added some posts. If we take a look on the back end, we can see we just have the default WordPress themes installed. And the only plugin I have installed is this plugin Faker Press, which is what I use to create the demo content. The first step I take in site building are the installs. I install the theme and Elementor first, then I install the Central Color Palette plugin. This is because, as we'll see, when we set up the Central Color Palette, we can enable it for the theme and Elementor, so it's easier to have those in place first. I'll begin by installing the theme, the Page Builder Framework. The Page Builder Framework is a general purpose theme, which as the name suggests, works well with page builders. Like Astra, Generate Press, and Ocean WP, there's a free version of the theme in the WordPress theme directory, and there's a pro plugin that adds more features. The first step in the installation is to install the theme and the pro add-on. I go to Appearance, Themes, Add New, and then I search for Page Builder Framework. Click Install and Activate. Normally when I set up a site, I delete all but one of these. I keep one of the default themes. I think it's recommended to have one in case there's a problem with your activated theme. And so I would delete the other themes. Then I install the premium plugin that goes with the theme. You typically get those from the themes website. You log into your account and download it. And then you upload it to your site. You activate it, and then you enter the license, which I've already done. Next, I install the Elementor Page Builder. There's a free version of Elementor with lots of features available in the WordPress plugin directory. You can see it has more than 4 million active installs. And you install that by searching for it here. Click Install and Activate. If you were going to use the pro version of Elementor, then I would install that now at the same time. But the free version of Elementor generously includes the theme style settings. So for this tutorial, I don't need to have the pro version of Elementor installed. Next, I install the Central Color Palette plugin. This is a plugin, as we'll see, that allows you to manage the colors for your site globally. You install that the same way as you did in Elementor. You search for it, install, and activate it. So that's the base. I install the theme, its premium plugin, Elementor, and the Central Color Palette plugin. The next step is to configure our colors. And the settings for the Central Color Palette are here under Settings. You can see that it automatically picked up the theme and Elementor that we had those installed. And we can also select to have the color palette shown in the Gutenberg block editor and in the classic editor if you're using that. So this is why I install the theme and Elementor first so that when we set up the central color palette we have these selections already available. If you installed your page builder or your theme afterwards you could come back into the settings and enable it later. Then I click Save. Now it's time to add the colors. You may have gotten the colors you're going to use from the client or from some other source. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to look through some of the color palettes that are available on the Canva website. There are lots of sites with sample color palettes or with color pickers that will allow you to generate a palette. 
I looked through the options available, and for this demo, I chose the Vintage Charm color palette. I'll use the green as the primary color and the gold as the accent color. So the next step is to type these hex codes into the central color palette. You add a color by clicking on this plus sign. Then you type in your color and it gives it a name. And then you click the plus sign again to add the next color. I'll pause the video and enter the four colors from our color palette. Okay, I've entered the four colors. The next thing I often do is I generate some lighter shades of the primary color and the secondary accent color, which I'll use for section backgrounds. To generate these, I use a graphics program. I like to use Stencil, which has a free tier and also has a WordPress plugin, but you can do this with almost any graphics program. What I do is I have a white background and then I add a layer over that with the color from the palette. I adjust the transparency until I get a color which I think would make a good background color. Then I grab that hex code and I add it to the central color palette. Since I'm generating these light colors for the background, I probably won't need this light color from the original palette, so I'll get rid of that. Now let's do the same thing with the gold color. Grab that and enter that also into the central color palette. So here I've used the same process now, and I've generated two shades from the green and two shades from the gold, and I put them in order. Don't forget to save before you leave the screen or you'll lose your settings. Just to show you what it was all about, let's go into the customizer for the theme. Look at one of the color pickers, and we see our palette here. Let's go take a look at a post in the Gutenberg editor, and we'll see our color settings are available there as well. And finally, we'll look in Elementor, and Color Picker in Elementor, we'll see our theme colors there as well. So by using the Central Color Palette plugin, we were able to create a global color palette for the site, which is available for use everywhere. Now that I have the global color option set, I next make the selections for all of the theme options. I do the theme options before Elementor because it's possible to set Elementor, as we'll see, to pick up the theme settings. Gutenberg will also use a lot of the theme settings. However, neither the theme nor Gutenberg can use Elementor settings. So we set the theme settings first and let those trickle down to Gutenberg and Elementor. As with most general purpose, page builder friendly themes, there are two places where you can configure the settings. You can go into the customizer or you can go to the theme settings page. You set the colors and topography in the customizer, so let's go there. The exact settings you're going to use depends on your needs and your site and your content. I'm just gonna go through a few of the theme settings so that you get the idea. If we look at layout, I just wanna point out that the default layout of the Page Builder framework is 1200 pixels wide and we'll need that information later. If we go into the sidebar settings, we can set the background color. Let's go with that. Then if we go to the theme buttons, should be a button like there. I like to make the background color very light colored and then a hover color darker. Have the font color be the primary color. And then I like to set the primary button colors the same, but you could do that differently if you wanted to. And then I like to have a slight border radius and like to have a border color. So this is what the button looks like. 
Next, if we go to typography, we're going to need to choose some fonts. We'll need to choose fonts for the heading text and the body text. Again, you may have gotten those from your client, but if you need to choose some, a good place to look is to go to Font Pair where they show you some popular font pairings, title and text, title and text. So you can choose from one of these. And after looking through them, I chose Open Sans for the title and Laura for the body. These are Google fonts that are available within the Page Builder framework. So we can choose those. Then here's the text font. And for text color, I'm going to choose this really dark green here. For the accent color, I'll choose our green. And the hover color, I'll choose the gold for the text so that it looks like that. And then these are our, the places where you set the color and the topography for all of the headings. And these will trickle down, so we only need to set them once unless we want to adjust the sizes. Okay, so there are the topography settings. Now let's go into the header and let's enable a pre-header. I don't want anything on this side, but on the this side I would add social buttons here and I'll make the background color this green and I'll use for the font color, I'll use this light color. And then for the accent color, I'll choose the gold. And for the hover color, I'll choose this lighter color gold. Then we need a little bit more area here for our page title. And if this were a real site, of course, we'd create a logo and we'd spend more time on this. Then for the background color, I think I'm going to choose our light green. And for the font color, I'll choose green. And for the hover color, I'll choose gold. OK. Now, I think I'd like to have a little line here under the header. So I'm going to look in the Chrome DevTools. And we see that there's the pre-header. And there's the navigation. So I'm going to grab that class and then put in a little CSS here to add that line. OK. Now we could do a lot more, but I think this is good enough as an example. So I'm going to publish this and we'll go out. And this is kind of our first draft. And we see that we've applied the theme colors and the topography settings. So the next step then is to go into Elementor. First thing we want to do is we want to go to Admin Elementor Settings. And we want to disable the default colors of Elementor's default colors so it'll pick up the theme colors. And we want to disable the default font so it'll pick up the font settings that we made in the customizer. We'll save those. Then the next thing we do is we go to the Style tab. Now remember I showed you that the default width for the Page Builder Framework is 1200 pixels. So we'll enter that. But now we also need to get the tablet and mobile breakpoints. To get those we're going to go to the Theme Settings. This is the theme settings page. And the page builder framework has a place in the user interface where you can set these. We see that above 1024 pixels, it'll go from tablet to desktop. 
So if we look at the Elementor settings, it says 1025, which is what we want because it says below this breakpoint, it'll go into tablet. So it can be a little bit of a mind bender because most people, when you're talking about breakpoints, do it this way above. But Elementor's been doing it the other way, which is below. So we need to add one pixel so that they match. Then for mobile breakpoints, the Elementor default is 768 and the theme defaults is 768. So to make these match, we need to add one pixel here so that they match. Then we save these. Now the Elementor page width and breakpoints are the same as the theme. The next step is to go into a page using Elementor and go into the settings now default color and default fonts, these are what we disabled just a minute ago. We can leave those alone. But a new setting from Elementor is the theme style settings. And this is very generously available in the free version of Elementor. So we go into here. Now the typography settings, these are all things that we just did in the theme. We absolutely want to ignore these now in Elementor. The only things we want to set in Elementor are the things that won't carry over from the theme. Unfortunately, buttons is one of those. Even though we configured buttons in the theme customizer, Elementor uses its own class styles. So we'll need to configure those here as well. Let me add a button here first so you can see what I mean. See, this is using the default Elementor button style. It didn't pick it up from the theme, although it did pick up the colors and fonts from the theme. But it's pretty easy just to duplicate what we did in the theme customizer. So now the buttons match. Because tables, form fields, and images are HTML element based, like the typography options, I think these will automatically pick up any theme styling. Okay, now that we've set the Elementor options, we save. And if you're curious about this, you can go out to the Elementor template areas and you'll see that this is the style kit that's created. It doesn't matter what page you go into that theme style settings. It saves the styles in this kit here. So that's kind of cool. These are the first steps I usually go through when building a new site. To summarize the steps involved, first install the theme and base plugins. The theme, the themes pro add-on, Elementor and Central Color Palette. Second, set the global colors in the Central Color Palette so that those are available in the Theme Customizer, Elementor, and the Block Editor. Third, do all of the configuration you can in the Theme Customizer. Most of these will be picked up by the Block Editor and can also be used by Elementor. Fourth, in the Elementor settings, disable the default colors and fonts so that Elementor will use the theme settings. Set the page width and breakpoints in the Elementor style settings to match those of the themes. And finally, in the Elementor editor, go to the theme style area. Avoid the typography and color settings, as these will be picked up from the theme. But go ahead and set the button styles and anything else which won't trickle down from the customizer. In this video, I use the pro version of the Page Builder Framework theme because the theme options are clear and you can do things like change the breakpoints from the theme settings page. If you're using a theme that doesn't show the page width or breakpoints, then you may need to contact the theme's developer to get that information. All of the steps that I've undertaken in this tutorial you might do anyway, but by following them in this order, you can intelligently make the most of the layout, styling, and responsive options with a minimal amount of effort. And you also avoid setting the options in two places where you might accidentally create conflicts. There's a text version of this tutorial available on the Elementor 360 website, along with other tutorials and walkthroughs and Elementor resources.
That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.